So let's take a look at the updates to Keynote that have just dropped in the latest version of iPad OS 15. And there are some really, really great features here that I think lots of people are going to really enjoy how it changes how you interact with things. So just as an overview here, you'll see within the App Store and the Update section a whole list of updates from Live Video, which is a really, really cool tool to multi-presenter slideshow. And then just some, some incremental updates where there are just some uh, new charts that you can utilize, drag and drop on your phone, which is going to be a really, really cool thing. But I'm just going to take a look at just a couple of the updates that I think are going to be really, really beneficial for classroom practice as well as online learning, which we're still in the midst of in many cases. So here we are in Keynote. Let's just take a look at some of those additional tools. And the first one to highlight is this ability to add in live video. Now, this is something that I've kind of used third-party applications to do or little workarounds. And it's great that Keynote has built this directly into the presentation tool. If I tap on the plus icon, you'll notice we now have live video as an option. When I choose live video, here we go. We have this video screen which will appear wherever I want it to be on the screen. I can turn it on or turn it off as I need to. Resize it in the same way as you would with any shapes, etc. And you even have the ability to change the radius of those curved edges if you want to think about the design, etc. of where this video is going to appear on the screen. Now, this is a great way, depending on how you use it, you might screen record your presentations to use asynchronously, or if you're doing a live presentation, again, you can be directly in the presentation as you're giving the presentation. I'm also starting to think of some really, really fun effects that you can do with this, as you can interact with things on the screen, pointing to them, pointing down, as animations might appear. Again, maybe we'll look at that in a future video when it comes to the creative use of these tools. So live video, I think, is going to have a huge impact. Again, you can do this across multiple slides. So you see that I've got that video already ready to go onto that next page. So as I move through, I could have that video in a slightly different place on the screen. But the effect is exactly the same. That video just plays through the whole time. Really, really nice feature. Now, something else that's really great here is the ability to change how you interact when you are actually presenting. Now, if I just chose to start this as a presentation, tapping on the play icon, we'll come to multi-presenter slideshow in a second, but let's just look at the options when you're presenting yourself. So I'm going to play this on my device. Again, you'll notice here that live video is there on the device, ready to go for you to use. But you also now have some additional tools. If I hard press on the screen, I'll bring up these options at the bottom. The left one, brings out the sidebar, just allows me to quickly move between my slides. The middle option is the same one that was always there before, just a different way to either navigate through your slides, but also have those annotation tools over the top or use that pointer function. And then finally, because I don't have access to turn this camera on and off here, I have access here where I can just choose to not display the video on that slide at any point. So again, different ways that you might want to um, interact with your presentation and navigate through those slides. Now, the second tool here is to be able to share the presentation. Now, we've all heard the phrase over this last year, next slide, please, as you're sharing a presentation or you're watching a shared presentation. And that takes away from the flow of some of those presentations. So we now have this ability to have a multi-presenter slideshow. So as long as the presenter that you're presenting with has access to the same document as you shared through iCloud, you can then present it no matter where you are across the Wi-Fi. So in this case, I've got this uh, presentation all set up, ready to go. You'll see at the top here, I can see who is part of the presentation. So the, my other device is, is controlling this at the moment. So this is me, the other device is controlling the device. And you'll also see that's highlighted at the bottom. If I tap on the next screen on the other device, you'll see it changes on this device. And then if I want to control that slideshow, I just simply take control. And now you'll notice it changes to stop controlling. So I now have control of the presentation, access to all of those options change the slides using the arrows at the bottom or simply by tapping my screen and having those builds come in. So again, just a really, really nice way to be able to interact while sharing 
uh, a presentation with a colleague um, or an, a fellow student, etc. So really, really simple, really, really nice updates there. I'm sure there are lots more to explore as time goes on, but I think those are the, the really, really key features for me that I think are going to have a huge impact. And I'd love to hear in your comments below how you think these are going to impact on your teaching um, in your classrooms or how you might use this with students and how they might use it themselves for developing their presentation skills.